Hey, hello, and welcome to this tutorial on determining the pH uh, of buffer solutions. Now, in this particular instance, as you can see from the example problem down below, that we have a buffer solution that's made up of ammonia and ammonium chloride. Now, the first thing I ask students to do is identify that you do, in fact, have a buffer scenario, meaning there is no actual reaction between these two substances, and if you try and write out a balanced chemical equation here, you're just going to end up with a funny look on your face because it's going to be very challenging to balance. What we have here are two solutions that when put into the same mixture, they are going to create a buffer scenario. Now what we look for in that instance is a weak acid or weak base. In this case, we have the weak base ammonia and the presence of a salt that contains its conjugate ion, meaning for ammonia, we are looking for the presence of ammonium. And certainly we can see that here in ammonium chloride. So there are a couple of ways that you can go through and solve for the pH of a buffer. One involves figuring out the uh, concentrations of the individual ions from the reaction mixture and then plugging it into an ice table, similar to what we've done in the past with the pH of salt solutions or determining the pH at equivalence. But I'm going to use something called the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. And if you're not familiar with that, then you may be by the end of this video, but that is ultimately what I'm going to use here. So this is a fairly standard buffer scenario. It's a basic buffer solution. And we can see down here that I have the two concentrations provided to me. I deliberately picked two different concentrations, although that's not ideal for maximizing the buffer capacity, but I wanted to make the calculation just a little more challenging. So what we can notice here is that we have the concentration and the volume of both the ammonia and ammonium chloride. So since we have the concentration and volume, what we can do is calculate the number of moles of the ammonium. And that's just our standard concentration times volume calculation. So in that regard, I'll take my concentration of 0 0.40 moles per liter, multiply it by the volume, convert it from milliliters into liters, and I'm going to get a value of 3.2 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of ammonia that I initially have. I can do the same for the ammonium chloride. And in doing so, I multiply the concentration of 0.30 moles per liter times 0.100 liters, again converted from milliliters, and I'm going to get a value of 3.0 times 10 to the negative 2 moles. So we can see here that this represents the molar value of the ammonium chloride. But in order to perform my buffer calculation, I need the number of moles of the ammonium ion. What we have to remember, though, is that ammonium chloride is a readily soluble salt. It's going to dissociate in a 1 to 1 ratio in solution. So the ammonium ion then is going to have the same number of moles of the ammonium chloride because of that one to one ratio. And so I know as well that this is going to be the number of moles of the ammonium ion. So here we have a representation of the henderson hasselbach equation for solving for the pOH if we have a basic buffer scenario. If this was an acidic buffer scenario, we would be calculating for the pH and we would be using the pKa as well as the concentration of the salt over the acid. But in this case, because we are solving for a basic buffer problem, we are going to first figure out the pOH. We are going to use the pKb here, and then we are going to add it to the log of the concentration of the salt in the numerator divided by the concentration of the base in the denominator. Now, you will have noticed here that we calculated the number of moles of each of the salt and the base. So we would, in order to use this version of the equation, have to figure out the total volume and then ultimately the new concentration of the ammonia and the new concentration of the ammonium chloride. Because keep in mind, these initial concentrations that we have here and here are the concentrations of these solutions initially before they are mixed. So these are not the concentrations in the reaction mixture. These are the initial concentrations. For the henderson hasselbach equation, we would have to use the concentrations in that reaction mixture. But if we keep in mind that the volume is going to be the same, for both the concentration of the ammonia and the concentration of the ammonium ion, that is they exist in the same volume of reaction mixture, we can sort of divide that out, meaning we can represent the henderson hasselbach equation in another way. So if we take a look at this now, this is a representation of the henderson hasselbach equation that only requires us to know the number of moles. So as a result, we can use this representation to help us figure out what the pOH is going to be. So one of the first questions that students have is, well, what is pKb? And the answer is, well, just think about it as the pH. The pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration or hydronium ion concentration. The pKb is the negative log of the Kb. So the Kb of our base in this case is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 because our weak base is ammonia. So we are going to be using the negative log of the Kb of ammonia in our calculation. So in order to solve for this, 
you're going to have to calculate the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, and then you're going to add that to the log of 3 decimal 0 times 10 to the negative 2 divided by 3.2 times 10 to the negative 2. Now make sure that you calculate this in the appropriate order, that is you're using the correct syntax in your calculator. So you will have to get used to your calculator, different calculators are going to calculate this differently. Now the value you should come up with is 4 decimal 72 for your POH. Now keep in mind that is two significant figures, only the numbers to the right of the decimal are significant. And we know that it's two significant figures because of the 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, the 3.0, and the 3.2 for our two molar values. Now it's just a matter of calculating the pH, which is going to be 14 minus our pOH. And we get a value of 9.28, which again makes sense because here we have a basic buffer solution. So we should have it a little more on the basic side of neutral. So hopefully after watching this video you have a better understanding of how to solve for the pH from the pOH for a basic buffer solution using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Thanks for watching.